I'm Tammy Haddad for the Washington AI Network here at the NVIDIA GTC conference. It's been quite a day. Jensen Wang did the keynote address and we got to talk to him right after. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., welcome to GTC. Uh, this is the Super Bowl of AI, people say. Today, we're announcing that the Department of Energy is partnering with NVIDIA to build seven new AI supercomputers to advance our nation's science. I have to have a shout out for Secretary Chris Wright. He has brought so much energy to the DOE, a surge of energy, a surge of passion to make sure that America leads science again. As I mentioned, Computing is the fundamental instrument of science, and we are going through several platform shifts. On the one hand, we're going to accelerate computing. That's why every future supercomputer will be GPU-based supercomputer. We're going to AI so that AI and principled solvers, principled simulation, principled physics simulation is not going to go away, but it could be augmented, enhanced, scaled, use surrogate models, AI models, working together. We also know that principled solvers, classical computing, could be enhanced to understand the state of nature using quantum computing. We also know that in the future, we have so much signal, so much data we have to sample from the world, remote sensing is more important than ever. And these laboratories are impossible to experiment at the scale and speed we need to unless they're robotic factories, robotic laboratories. So all of these different technologies are coming into science at exactly the same time. Secretary Wright understands this, and he wants the DOE to take this opportunity to supercharge themselves and make sure the United States stay at the forefront of science. Sir, yeah. did you approach the Energy Department, or did they approach you about making this supercomputer deal? We are, today we announced seven supercomputers for the DOE. We're also partnering with the DOE, eight of the labs, on quantum computing quantum GPU computing, and it's the, the energy that Secretary Wright has put into advancing science for America is just really incredible. Um, uh, but, but anyhow, uh, the, the, we worked with each one of the labs individually, but it's really Secretary Wright's vision and his energy to want to advance this and get it done so quickly that, that really made it possible. We're building the largest supercomputer for the U.S. government ever. Telecommunications is the backbone, the lifeblood of our economy, our industries, our national security. And yet, ever since the beginning of wireless, where we defined the technology, we defined the global standards, we exported American technology all around the world so that the world can build on top of American technology and standards. It has been a long time since that's happened. Wireless technology, around the world, largely today, deployed on foreign technologies. Our fundamental communication fabric built on foreign technologies. That has to stop. And we have an opportunity to do that, especially during this fundamental platform shift. As you know, computer technology is at the foundation of literally every single industry. It is the single most important instrument of science it's the single most important instrument of industry. And I just said, we're going through a platform shift. That platform shift should be the once in a lifetime opportunity for us to get back into the game, for us to start innovating with American technology. Today, today we're announcing that we're gonna do that. We have a big partnership with Nokia. Nokia is the second largest telecommunications maker in the world. It's a $3 trillion industry. Infrastructure is hundreds of billions of dollars. There are millions of base stations around the world. If we could partner, we could build on top of this incredible new technology, fundamentally based on accelerated computing and AI, and for United States, for America, to be at the center of the next revolution in 6G. Sir, you announced a new cloud today. Your partners in the old cloud, how do you think they're going to feel about that, especially in telecom? The telecommunication network today is essentially 
communications. It's not a computing platform. It's kind of like networking used to be back in the old days. Cloud computing added computing services on top of the network. We're going to do the same. We're going to use AI to, make, to revolutionize 5G to 6G. And then on top of that, we're going to use radios to deliver AI services for robotics and industrial automation, so on and so forth. I think it's going to be a brand new growth opportunity for us. There, you know, this is a hundred, several hundred billion dollar infrastructure business, and it needs to be reinvented. So this is a brand new growth initiative for us. Let's talk about AI. What is AI? Most people would say that AI is a chatbot, and it, it's rightfully so. There's no question that ChatGPT is at the forefront of what people would consider AI. However, just as you see right now, these scientific supercomputers are not going to run chatbots. They're going to do basic science. Science, AI, the world of AI is much, much more than a chatbot. Of course, the chatbot is extremely important, and AGI is fundamentally critical. Deep computer science, incredible computing, great breakthroughs are still essential for AGI. But beyond that, AI is a lot more. AI is, in fact, I'm going to describe AI in a couple different ways. This first way, the first way you think about AI is that it has completely reinvented the computing stack. The way we used to do software was hand coding. Hand coding software running on CPUs. Today, AI is machine learning, training, data intensive programming, if you will, trained and learned by AI that runs on a GPU. In order to make that happen, the entire computing stack has changed. Notice, you don't see Windows up here. You don't see CPU up here. You see a whole, different, a whole fundamentally different stack. Everything from the need for energy. And this is another area where our administration, President Trump gets, deserves enormous credit. His pro-energy initiative, his recognition that this industry needs energy to grow. It needs energy to advance, and we need energy to win. His recognition of that and putting the weight of the nation behind pro-energy growth completely changed the game. If this didn't happen, we could have been in a bad situation. And I want to thank President Trump for that. What's your favorite AI? My favorite AI, um, I use uh, ChatGPT, Gemini, Rock, and um, I ask them for second and third opinions. And what's your and so, best prompt? What's your favorite prompt? My favorite prompt is when I load a whole bunch of research papers into, into, the, into the AI, and I come up with a, a, a rough outline of the type of you know, uh, research that I would like to do and a whole bunch of questions. And so I'm fairly rigorous in setting up the, the AI to succeed, and it comes back uh, with a fairly detailed report. And, and it's, that's really, really quite successful. So this is what we talked about today. The second inflection point is now upon us. The second platform transition, AI from classical handwritten software to artificial intelligence. Two platform transitioning happening at the same time, which is the reason why we're feeling such incredible growth. Quantum computing we spoke about. Open models we spoke about. We spoke about enterprise with CrowdStrike and uh, Palantir accelerating their platforms. Uh, we spoke about robotics, a new, large, potentially one of the largest consumer electronics and industrial manufacturing sectors. And of course, we spoke about 6G. NVIDIA has new platforms for 6G. We call it ARC. We have a new platform for robotics cars. We call that Hyperion. We have new platforms even for factories two types of factories. The AI factory, we call that DSX. And then factories with AI, we call that Mega. And so now we're also manufacturing in America. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. And thank you for allowing me to bring... <clears throat> Thank, thank you for, for allowing us to bring GTC to Washington, D.C. We're going to do it hopefully every year. And thank you all for your service and making America great again. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this inside look 
at the GTC Conference of NVIDIA talking to Jensen Wang. And we have more to come on our next episode where we talk to the technologists at NVIDIA and at companies from all around the world.